So this is day two of my birthday challenge to myself. All about trying to get myself out there, go back into live speeches. So yesterday I talked about unplugging from the matrix. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. But today I wanted to talk about the term be good. And it all came to me last night when I was thinking about my one of my favorite movies from childhood, which is E.T. It was a 1984 classic movie by Steven Spielberg, right? E.T., which stands for extraterrestrial. And the whole concept of the film E.T. is that this extraterrestrial, right, or alien, however you want to refer to it, is mistakenly or accidentally left behind by his family who comes to Earth, you know, on a spaceship. And I think the police are after them or they, they get a sign that there's someone looking for them. So they all rush back to their spaceship. But E.T. is looking for plants and he's having a good time and he's off by himself exploring. And he gets left behind and he's scared and he's freaking out because he's in this world where he doesn't speak the language. He doesn't know anything about the culture, really. They were exploring and he's alone. And he meets or he stumbles upon this home of this young boy named Elliot. And Elliot is maybe about nine or 10 years old. And Elliot is pretty much a loner. And they form this really incredible bond. And the reason that I'm calling today's topic Be Good is because at the end of the movie, one of my favorite scenes ever, um, and, and the thing about what I love about E.T. is there are these little touches in the movie that really talk to us about the human experience. So there are certain things that you can see as someone watching this movie that you can understand as a human being that we can't see between each other, but we may be able to feel, right? So at the end of the movie, E.T.'s chest, whenever he's talking about love or anything that's love related, or he's talking about his power, his chest glows this beautiful red. And you can essentially see inside to his heart. And when he's leaving, he's saying all these parting things to the family that he stayed with, Elliot's family. And he looks at Elliot directly, he points his finger, and he says, Elliot, be good. And Elliot has tears in his eyes, and E.T. may have tears, I don't remember. E.T. may have tears in his eyes, and Elliot understands this meaning of be good. And for a lot of us as children, people say to us, be good, right? Be a good girl, be a good boy. And what I loved about that scene in the movie is for the first time, it felt like this loner little boy who hadn't really had any sort of connections with other people was finally able to have a connection with this extraterrestrial. And that extraterrestrial understood him enough to see into his soul and told him to be good. But I think the most emotional part and the most incredible part was that in saying that, he saw Elliot, right? He saw him. But when we say see, like I see you, it's not with these eyes. It's with this third eye and with this, with our heart, right? And so, you know, I love to break things down. So let's talk about this whole concept of being good or be good, right? And of course, because I'm obsessed with words, I wanted to explore more what this whole concept means. Because I think what happens to us in childhood is we start to take on the stories of whatever our parents tell us we should be, whatever uh, 
things that they want us to develop, we start to accept as our own. So what happens as children is we're told, like Elliot was, to be good. And in trying to uphold the idea of being good, right, which means to many of us, stay on the right path. Don't disobey your parents. Do well in or do good in school. Get a good job, right? There's many goods throughout your life that you essentially should follow. We lose the concept of what the term being good actually means for ourselves. And instead, we walk around with these stories about what being good means in terms of our parents, our family. And so what happens is we learn how to be good for other people, but we never really learn how to be good to ourselves. Mm. Mm. Let me say that one more time. We learn to be good to other people and for other people, but we don't learn how to be good to ourselves. And that is the key, right? In school and from our upbringing, we learn a lot from childhood about how to treat other people, right? There are sayings like, do unto others as you would do unto yourself. Treat others how you would like to be treated. But you never really learn about how you should treat yourself and what being good means for you. So what happens a lot is fear sets in and being good becomes a concept of doing the right thing, taking the right job, walking the right path, and not being unique, being different, questioning things and taking risks. And that is where the term being good kind of gets problematic, right? So let's break it down. I looked it up because I'm obsessed with etymology and the history of words. I really like that kind of stuff. And good used to originally be spelled God like G-O-D, but the O has a little symbol on the top, a straight line. I don't remember what it's called. And the O was a long O, so good, right? So it sounds similar. And it comes from a German, like German meaning um, of kindness and, and doing the right thing in Sanskrit, right? It's Gandhya, and it means what we hold on to, what we cling to. But the original old English meaning of the term good is to be a person of God, right? And when I think about that, that really is an interesting term or definition, right? To be a person of God. Because whether you identify um, with the term God or universe or higher power or supreme being, whatever you believe in, right? There's this idea that there is something of higher power above us that seeks to help us to live through our lives, right? And I've always heard the term God is love. And when I think about that, I think about the term God is love and be the original meaning of good being a person of God. So good means being the love. But if we can't be the love to ourselves, how can we be good to anything or anyone else? So I say all that to say, when you're thinking about the term, be good, be kind, all of that must first originally apply to you, 
yourself. That is the key. Because if we don't, as my favorite, one of my favorite, favorite icons, RuPaul always says, if you don't know how to love yourself or if you can't love yourself, honey, how in the hell are you going to love anyone else? Can I get an amen? Right? So, I mean, if we don't know how to be good to ourselves, if we don't know how to take care of ourselves, if we don't know how to love ourselves and be the love ourselves, how can we truly be good to anyone else? Let that sink in. For me, I had to learn how to start to detach from a lot of concepts of what being a good girl, being a good daughter meant so that I could learn how to be good and love myself. Let me say that again. I had to detach, let go, disassociate from a lot of what I was taught being good, being a good daughter, being a good girl, being a good person meant so that I could come up with and learn how to love myself. Mm. Often, but we don't see the power in ourselves and we aren't able to see the love within ourselves. Life can be very challenging and it can feel like everything's against you. And you know what that means? A lot of the times that means we're in victim mode. And when we're in victim mode, it's really hard to recognize the God inside of us the power of the universe inside of us, the power that beats the energy that thrives through our bones, through our, through our blood vessels. That's our power. But when we're looking outside of ourselves for recognition of, you're doing a good job. You're a good girl. You're a good daughter. You're a good friend. That's all well and good, but if you don't believe any of that for yourself, then why does it really matter when people say it to you, right? So something that I'd like you to think about today, that I'd like you to consider today, something that's really helped me and something that I'm continuously working on is connecting to my inner self, to my inner being. Because right here, just like in the movie E.T., how I described how, and if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about, how E.T.'s chest lights up when he's trying to heal something. Like he had this power to heal plants with his finger, right? Just like in E.T., he had this power, the power that you have inside of you. That is something you need to touch on. So today, while you're going through your day, think about that concept of being good. What does that mean for you in your own life? How does that translate for you? What kinds of stories have you been told from your family about what being good means? That is important. And then, how can you detach from that and start to come up with your own feelings of what it means to be good. And I want you to try something today. Take your two hands just for a minute and put them over your heart before you go to bed or when you're feeling a little stressed and feel your heartbeat and ask your heart what messages it has for you. Because when you start to do that, you will start to get in touch with your own unique power, your own unique good. So be good in your own way and slay and enjoy and vibe and have an awesome day. And remember to take time for you and for your own power and to be good to yourself. Define it for yourself because good is love and love is inside of you, and love is an energy that vibrates. So connect with yourself today, 
and connect to your power, connect to your love. Have a beautiful day. Thank you for listening. Have an awesome, enjoyable day.